Greetings, my wonderful Facebook family. This is your main man and your best friend, Johnny Cash, and we are live. Okay, so <clears throat> let's get this party started, shall we? Ah, okie dokie. All right. So um, we're going to talk about sex race and pyramids Shaquem peace thanks for chiming in with us Choli thank you for chiming in with us great to see you Roland thank you for chiming in with us all right so <clears throat> let's get this party started shall we okay I want to show you guys some material I picked up today this is volume one Sex and Race by J.A. Rogers. Okay, that's volume one. Hardback. Volume two. Hardback. Volume three. Hardback, right? Okay. And uh, price tag. 90 bones, right there, booyah. Yeah, I know it's backwards, but it's 90 bucks, right? Okay. So uh, I guess I got a deal. I saw this on uh, Amazon when I got home for $100. Um, no, that's wrong. $95 for Volume 1 hardback. 95 bucks just for volume one hardback okay peace andrew peace to the god great to see you all right so um i saw a volume two hardback priced at 14 bucks i also saw a volume three hardback i think was listed at around maybe 15 or 20 bucks so i guess i had a good day i didn't have to use my ak right okay sadia thank you so much for chiming in great to see you nettles thank you for chiming in great to see you gwendolyn thank you for chiming in great to see you okay so uh yeah <clears throat> yeah so you know, we're going to talk about sex and race, and we're going to talk about pyramids. Yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to talk about that, right? Okay, so uh, let's get this party started, shall we? All right. All right. So I have volume one right here. I'm going to read from it for a second and uh, share some thoughts with you. Um just for your information, just to give you a little background about Mr. Rogers, he studied under Prophet Noble Drew Ali. Okay? He was an eminent um, anthropologist, ethnologist, uh, master world historian, and uh, at the time he was alive, he knew more about the uh, original people of the earth than any living man of his day. All right? Okay, so. This material came out. Uh, let's look at this copy right here. Let's take a peek at it. Ah, come on, copy. All righty. Now that's the renewal. That was the renewal. Okay, it looks like uh, August 1st, 1952. August of uh, 1952. Okay. Copyright was renewed in 1968. All right, fine. Fantastic. Okay. So, we're going to get into some information here. And uh, the relevance of him being a student of Noble Drew Ali is going to 
become apparent a little bit later on as we go deeper into this situation. Morano, thank you for chiming in, brother. Brother, great to see you. Uh, Reyna, thank you for chiming in. Okay, so let's see here. Now, watch this. Watch this. Okay. <clears throat> he says that uh, starting with ancient Egypt and, see, and coming down through Greece and Rome, this book shows what the Negro contributed, especially to Western European civilizations to the present. Okay. All right. Now, and what's interesting about this is that this is material from another book that he wrote titled Nature Knows No Color Line, right? Okay. Anterior, my ninja. All right. So he goes on to say that, um, for instance, there were the Moors who invaded Europe in 711 AD and were the dominant power there for the next 500 years. Now, that sounded so nice. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it twice. Okay, now. For instance, there were the Moors who invaded Europe, 711 AD, and were the dominant power there for the next 500 years. Okay, now, right there, I'm going to stop for a minute and say this. Notice what it did not say. It did not say the Moors invaded Spain in 711 AD and set up camp for 500 years. Why didn't he say that? Because there was no Spain in 711. Spain was not founded until January 20th, 1469. That's right, I said it. Spain was not even founded until January 20th, 1469. Look it up. Don't take my word for it. Look it up. The land at that time was called Iberia. Wasn't no damn Spain. All right? So the Moors invaded Europe. Invaded. I don't like that word. They occupied it. Look that word up. <laughs> they occupied Europe in 711. And the occupation continued for the next 500 years. But it wasn't an occupation per se. It was a salvation. Because at that stage of history, Europe was in their dark ages and the Moors presence extricated them out of the dark ages. Okay, now he continues. He goes on to say, make sure you don't miss my pretty face here. All right, he goes on to say, writings and paintings in those times show them, talking about the Moors, as jet black with woolly hair. The Moors gave Europe one of the finest, one of its finest civilizations and rescued it from the Dark Ages. Mm hmm. All right. It continues. These words are tiny as fuck. Okay. 
All right. Not only have the Negroes contributed science and art to Europe, but since they were once since they were once dominant, their blood entered into that of the whites and some were ancestors of Europe's leading families, including royal ones from Italy to Scandinavia. Okay, now. The plot thickens. Yes, it does. Watch this now. I'm about to rock your paradigm to its foundations. How many know that England had been absorbing Negroes not only since the Roman invasion of BC 55, but over a thousand years before. Oh, it goes on. I'm not done with you. How many know that Negro slavery lasted in England for 434 years from 1440 to 1834? That during that time, Hundreds of Africans were brought in, yes, brought in, that the English absorbed these blacks. Look up the word absorbed. And that some of them became founders of titled families. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so there's your slavery. The 400 years of slavery. There it is right there. I said, there it is right there. The Africans were enslaved in Europe for 400 years. Ain't that too bad. I done stole y'all Negroes sacred slavery in American narrative. Damn it, man. Hey, shit happens. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Annika, thank you for chiming in. Ephraim, thank you for chiming in. My main man, Maynard, thank you for chiming in. Great to see you. Okay. All right. I'm going to read this last piece from this particular section. Furthermore, that since American whites are descended from English and other European whites that some of the early American colonists were of this Negro ancestry too. Mm, mm, mm. I'll be doggone. Hmm. I'll be doggone. I just fucked up your paradigm. I just stole your slavery in America narrative and have given you the truth, the real deal as to who were actually and literally enslaved for 400 years. It was our brothers and sisters east of the motherfucking Atlantic. The brothers and sisters 
of Europe. Yes, yes, all of the European countries where you find our brothers and sisters, they are the descendants of slaves. Yes, it's true. I just read it to you. I just read it to you. I just read it to you. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now, I'm going to drop some more shit on you. The fuck out of here. Because I'm not done with y'all. No, I'm not. I'm not done with y'all. You know. <clears throat> you know, sometimes I tell you I didn't come to be before you long. I just came to be before you strong. Well, I don't know about tonight. Shit, what time is it? It's about 7, 18 p.m. in Chicago, Chirac, Chi-Town, the Windy City, right? Okay, shit. I might rock this bitch for the next five hours. I don't know. I don't care because I got something to drop on you today. I got some news that you can use. And it's called Sex, Race, and Pyramids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. Okay. So, what have we covered so far? We've covered the fact that the Moors invaded Europe in 711 AD. They did not invade Spain. There was no Spain. Spain. Spain didn't even exist in 711 AD. It was called Iberia, right? Angela, great to see you, sweetie. Thanks for chiming in. Liv, thanks for chiming in. Alan, thanks for chiming, chiming in. Yolanda, thank you for chiming in. Iberia was the name of the ancient place that is called Spain today. And uh, that, along with the rest of Europe, was, um, it was, let me see, what's the best way to say this? It was, uh, it was developed. It was developed for 500 years. Uh, compliments of the Moors compliments of the Moors. And this uh, development uh, project commenced in 711 AD and went on for a little bit over 500 years. And it was all throughout Europe. And it uh, took Europe out of their dark ages and um, brought them into the Renaissance era. Yes, it did. Yeah. Don't let nobody tell you nothing different. I'm giving you facts today. Facts today. Right on. Okay? All righty. So, uh, next thing we covered was the fact that uh, the Moorish blood began to circulate throughout all of Europe, especially amongst what is called the black nobility all of your European royal families, right? Okay, I'm gonna say something else about that in a minute. We also covered the fact that these brothers and sisters' blood did not begin just with the Moors at that time, but even a thousand years prior to that time when you had a strong original presence dominating Europe. We're going to talk some more about that presence in, in just a moment. All right. We also said that this bloodline, these bloodlines were representative of the colonists who came over here. So to make a long story short, you had mulattoes who came over here and 
colonize the Americas. All right? Okay, now, let's take this another further. Let's take this thing another level deeper. Okay. Give me a minute here. Uh, okay, here we go. No, that's not it. Here we go. All right. Now, I just said that the Malahos colonized America. I didn't just say that. Oh, I'm saying it now. <laughs> and they would be called the days. You had different uh, Moorish titles, um, primarily five. You had others, but there were there were a a major. There were five major titles of Moorish nobility, and they were Ali, Al A L, L E L, Bay. B E Y and Day D E Y. Okay. The first four were your dark skinned, or as we would say, dark skinned did it, <laughs> Moors. The fifth title of nobility, the Days D E Y, were your light skinned, or as we would say, light-skinned did it, Moors. Those were the so-called founding fathers. All right? Okay. Let's keep it moving. There's a lot of history behind what I just said, but time does not permit for me to go deep into it. My mission tonight, is to jerk the slack out of you, give you the shake up for the wake up, put a fire under your ass so that you will get up and do some research, all right? Some forensic historical research, all right? Terrence, thanks for chiming in. Uh, charisma. Thank you so much for chiming in. Denise, it's great to see you. Thank you for chiming in with us tonight. Okay, now listen to this. I'm going to read this, uh, this last section. In other words, this is going to be the last section that I read from uh, volume one. And then uh, we're going to pass the baton to volume two. All righty. Okay, this section says, was there a mulatto race in Europe 30,000 to 50,000 years ago. And he says, the theory that the oldest human beings were what in America would be called Negroes is supported by the fact that the oldest known entire human skeletons so far discovered are Negroid, as the Grimaldis of Europe, whose skeletons may be seen in the Paris Museum of Anthropology and the Museum of Monaco, and whose relics may be found from Italy to Russia and as far north as Britain and Scandinavia. He goes on, where did the Grimaldi come from? By many, they are considered an African people, and they do show evidences of African ancestry in their physique and their culture. The Grimaldi women, like the Hottentots of South Africa, had huge humps of fat on their buttocks which were supposed to be a storage of reserve food, as are the humps of a camel. So 
they were what we would call today big booty girls. All right, let's go on. Their breasts were also very large and the nymphs or inner lips of the genitals so elongated that they seem hardly human. This trait is most apparent in the Venus of Willendorf, a Grimaldi woman, and the most ancient sculpture of the human form yet discovered. All right. And this is why Europe means black. That's right. The oldest skeletons in Europe. Met the specifications of the original people of the world. All right. Now. You say, wait a minute, Brother Cash. You, you, you said Europe means black. What else could it mean? What the fuck else could it mean? You know, you say European to mean Caucasians, and that's not what the evidence shows. The evidence shows that the oldest skeletons were of the original people, not Caucasian, period. So Europe cannot mean white. So now you have to make a, an adjustment in your paradigm. I told you I just fucked up your paradigm. Just gave you a checkup from the neck up. Yes, I did. Oh, and I'm just getting started. Yes, I am. Just getting started. Say you want to be starting something, got to be starting something. Say you want to be starting something, got to be starting something. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now. Now. Somebody, I just heard somebody think. I just heard somebody say, okay, then, if, if Europe really means black, then what does Africa mean? White? Yeah. Oh, you think I'm pulling your leg? Okay, then. All right, watch this. Peep this. Peep this. Y'all think I'm playing with y'all. I'm not playing. I didn't come to play. Did not come to play at all. Yeah. Okay. See this right here? Do you see this right? Chair. All right. This is where Africa comes from. This is where the name Africa comes from. Bam. Booyah. Scipio Africanus. This is his mug shot right here. Abso freaking Lutley. Abso freaking Lutley. Anthony, thank you for chiming in. Veronica, great to see you. Thank you for chiming in. All right. So, who was this cocksucker? Who was Scipio Africanus? Well, they give a date for him of 236 BCE to 183 BCE, okay? He was an officer, a politician, said he was a sculptor, right? Okay, so... History says that he was a general. Okay, fine. And he conquered a certain portion of what today is called Africa. But they named the whole goddamn continent after him. Now, that's interesting because nobody who's Ancestry 
originates in Africa calls themselves African. The people that you call Africans today don't call themselves Africans. I said they don't call themselves Africans. White folk are the only people who do that. <laughs> yeah. White folk are the only people who do that. And why do they do that? Because this name was used to, to, to mean, to mean and represent the continent of dark-skinned people, original people, that was conquered by whites. And that's what Africa means. That's what, African, that's what Africa means. And by extension, it includes any land that has been conquered by whites. Any land, you see. All right, now, the so-called Africans that we're talking about right now identify themselves based on their country of origin. You might get off the plane over there and say, my African brother, how are you? I'm, don't call me no African motherfucker. You're in Nigeria. I'm a Nigerian. Or you're in Kenya. I'm a Kenyan. Mm-hmm. Barack Hussein Obama didn't call himself an African American. He called himself a Kenyan American. Uh-oh. Damn. Damn. Did I just sling a thermonuclear knowledge warhead at your ass? Yes, I did. I did that. And... I meant that shit. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Mm-hmm. Carlos, thanks for chiming in, bro. All right. Now, watch this. An Ethiopian is not going to call themselves an African. They're going to say, I'm an Ethiopian, or I'm a Somalian, or I'm, I'm a uh, Cameroonian, or Angolian. Congolese, whatever the nation is called, whatever the country of origin is called, that is how they identify themselves, never as African. So who the fuck are you to call yourself or listen to some Negro Jesse Jackson tell you to call yourself African-American when Africans don't even call themselves African? Well, who calls themselves African? White folks? Yeah, that's right. White folks. Afrikaans. What the hell is that? White folk. Ain't no niggas calling themselves Afrikaans. Mm-hmm. All right, now. Giving you a check up from the neck up. Putting you on point with respect to history and the geopolitical scene. Nationality is the key. It is the key. It is the order of the day, as Prophet Noble Dr. Ali has told us time and time again. Yeah. Okay. All righty. So now. All right. So, talk to you about Scipio Africanus, and from that information, we, we learn that Africa means the land of original people that has been conquered by the so-called white people or the Caucasians. That's what Africa means, period. That's what Africa means. That's what Africa is. So... You want to call yourself an African? If you're not Caucasian, you sound like a fucking idiot. Yes, you do. Not just an idiot. A fucking idiot. You know what happens when two fucking idiots have a baby? 
they produced another fucking idiot. And the fucking idiocy has multiplied itself. Damn it, man. Ain't that too bad. Kelvin, thank you for chiming in. Appreciate you. Yeah. Okay, so now. All right, let's take this to the next level. Okay, now that those were excerpts from volume one. Let's now now volume one was titled. Volume one was titled The Old World. It was titled The Old World. Okay. Volume two is dealing with sex and race in the new world. What, what history, what the Caucasian historians are calling the new world. And when they say that, they're talking about the West. But in the secret societies, you learn that the West was not or is not the new world. It, in fact, is the old world. But that's, that's, another, that's another broadcast. That's another lesson. That's another blessing. That's another class. All right? Okay. So, now, let's just, let's keep this on. Sex, race, and the pyramids. Okay, so now, let's take this to, to the next level. Let's take this to the next level. And uh, <clears throat> when I when I was when I was flipping through volume two, right, I said, okay, so you know this this brother has a lot of different information in these chapters. Which chapter would be the best chapter to work with tonight from volume two to really drive home the point of this this false slavery in America narrative. Okay, so so that was my thinking. That was my thinking. Yeah, you, I got a I got somewhat of an attitude tonight. I went to therapy and uh, my chiropractor fucked me up. <laughs> yes, he did. Man, I laid on that on that goddamn table. That motherfucker took my neck. And usually, you know, he does he does the adjustment in a certain way. It's a, it's a quick popping. Hey man, you know that was a beautiful thing. You know that's that that's great. That feels good. But uh, I don't know if it was due to my trip to Philly over the weekend and uh, the sleep deprivation that I experienced um, as a result of my early flight and my late return. Um, and virtually no sleep in the middle of that time that had me more tense than I would normally be. But when he when he went to pop my neck this time, my whole left arm flew off the tape. I said, God damn, man, what the fuck? He started cracking the fuck up. But uh, I mean... My neck feels a hell of a lot better. You know what I'm saying? He aligned the neck, aligned the back, all that good stuff, you know. So all I need now is a big booty girl. When I get done with you guys, I'm going to see if I can see if one chimes in for a brother. <laughs> okay, so I said, what would the best chapter be from uh, volume two? to really bring out this thing about the false narrative, the false slavery in America narrative, you know. Um, yeah. Hi, Angela. Thanks for chiming in. Oh, you're in Philly too? Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. When I went live from the airport last week, um, 
for security purposes, I could not disclose where I was going. But, you know, now that I'm back, of course, I can disclose where I went, right? Okay. So I said, okay, here's a chapter. Here's a chapter that I think is going to be excellent to bring this point out. Chapter 26. And uh, listen to this now. When I, when I read the chapter title, I said, well, God damn. I don't even have to read the chapter contents. The title itself speaks volumes, right? And listen to what the title of chapter 26 is. Rich Negroes with white wives during slavery. Now, wait a goddamn minute. You said rich Negroes with white wives during slavery. Hi, Jennifer. Thanks for chiming in, sweetie. Great to see you. Okay, so let me get this right. You're telling me that during slavery, you had rich niggas with white wives. If you had rich niggas, fuck the white wives part. Let's just put that to the side. If you had rich niggas during slavery, the niggas were not slaves. I, I don't think you heard me. The chapter is titled Rich Negroes with White Wives During Slavery. And I'm saying fuck what J.A. Rogers is talking about after giving the title of that chapter. If you had rich Negroes during slavery, then how in the fuck could Negroes have been slaves. Okay, wait a minute now. Let's 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 recollect all of the components of this transatlantic slave trade narrative. The story goes that Caucasians from Europe colonized America. They came and discovered America, found Indians that would not work, so they could not make them slaves, so they put their ass on reservation. So now they needed a workforce, so they imported niggas they imported Africans and renamed them niggas because niggas only exist in America. Niggas are made in America. Okay? All right, now, that being the case, the only niggas or Negroes that you had were from Africa and they were slaves. So where your rich niggas coming from? How in the hell do you now have rich Negroes? Now see, I'm trying to show you how the narrative is bullshit because the more they keep telling you this story, they they pad the story with more bullshit to try to
connect with everybody trying to get everyone at various strata of society to accept the bullshit. So they have to come up with a story about, okay, well, we, since we got rich niggers today, we have to say that there were rich niggers during slavery so that the rich niggers today will accept the slavery narrative. Well, that glove don't fit, Hoss, because if the story says that the only slaves that were here, well, if the story says that the only niggas, because the Indians were not niggas, the Africans that were bought, allegedly brought, bought over here, brought over here on slave ships, those were the niggas and the Negroes and the coloreds and the blacks. Okay. So the only niggers in America were slaves and descendants of slaves. So during slavery, you didn't have no descendants of slaves. You had slaves. So to say during slavery means that you're talking about two classes of people. You're talking about Caucasians and you're talking about the slaves who were niggers or Negroes. How the fuck did the Negroes who were slaves become rich? That's bullshit. The glove don't fit. That glove does not fit at all. Right? Okay. So that was another bomb that just got dropped on your ass tonight, right? Okay, now, let me go to book three. Let me go to book three, volume three of Slave and Race by J.A. Rogers, student of Noble Durali, right? And this particular volume is subtitled, Why White and Black Mix? in spite of opposition, right? Okay, now, all righty. So, what I'm gonna share with you now Hi, Charlene, how you doing, baby? Long time no see, great to see you. Hope the family is doing well, and you also. Okay, now, so watch this. In volume three, hmm, we are about to get into something that's very, very interesting. Hit my screen. Oh, let me, let me get rid of this mark. With the quit in the house. Yeah. He, he. Okay, now. All right. Here we go. Alexander, hey, great to see you. Thank you for chiming in. Now, let's talk about, because this, this, uh, this volume is subtitled, Why? white and black mix in spite of opposition, right? Why do white and black mix in spite of opposition? So why does Kanye and the Kardashian girl mix in spite of opposition? Right? And you just follow that and incorporate others who are doing likewise. Right? So, and it's against that backdrop that I'm gonna, that I'm going to drop this next 
info bomb on that ass. And it's called the four laws of race mixing. Oh, you're going to love this one. You're going to love this one. Okay, now listen to this. Listen to this. As my man Bobby Hemmett would say, listen to this bullshit right here. <laughs> listen, y'all. Listen, listen, listen. I can't wait till I'm done so I can go back and listen, right? Okay, then. So, it says... Having seen arguments in great variety of pro and con offered by whites and Negroes of all classes, we shall now proceed to examine the subject in its more intimate detail. As a basis for this, I can think of nothing better than the so-called four laws of race mixing laid down by none other than Lester F. Two is still held not only by the masses, but I have reason to believe by most of the white sociologists and certainly most southern politicians and okay all right so okay all right here we go all righty here we go so I'm going to read that section again, just in case uh, it did not record. As a basis for this, I can think of nothing better than the so-called four laws of race mixing laid down by Lester F. Ward, 1841 through 1913, the father of American sociology. When discussing the rape of white women by black men as the supposed reason for lynching and I commented that I know the real reason for lynching um, I won't be able to get into it this evening though Ward it is true wrote some 50 years ago but his view is still held not only by the masses but I have reason to believe by most of the white sociologists and certainly most southern politicians and racial agitators. Since therefore it is popular opinion we are dealing with here, we shall examine these four laws and they are, listen, number one, the women of any race will freely accept the men of a race which they regard as higher than their own. That's law number one. I'm going to read that again. Law number one. The women of any race will freely accept the men of a race which they regard as higher as their own. Law number two. The women of any race will vehemently reject the men of a race which they regard as lower than their own. Again, law number two, the women of any race will vehemently reject the men of a race which they regard as lower than their own. Law number three, the men of any race will greatly prefer the women of a race which they regard higher than their own. I'm going to read that again. The men of any race will greatly prefer the women of a race 
which they regard higher than their own. And law number four, the men of any race in default of women of a higher race will be content with women of a lower race. And one last time for law number four, the, the men of any race in default of women of a higher race will be content with women of a lower race. Now, this is how J.A. Rogers translates these four laws into the mindset of his day, the presumed mindset of his day. Now, watch this now. Watch this shit here. Roughly adapted, they read, number one. Negro women will freely accept white men. Number two, white women will vehemently reject Negro men. Number three, Negro men will greatly prefer white women. Number four, Negro men unable to get white women will be content with Negro women. All right, now, now, I want to return to law number three, which says, the men of any race will greatly prefer the women of a race which they regard higher than their own. All right, then. I would like to present for your consideration, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, exhibit motherfucking A. Now, these are they laws. These are they laws. Hey. Hey, Duchess of Sussex have met the King of Morocco on the last night of their three date. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have met the King of Morocco on the last night of their three day tour. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Is that Prince Harry? The Caucasian? Is that Megan? The Moorish woman? <laughs> let, let, me, let me understand. Let me understand these laws that the Caucasian sociologist guru wrote that all of the intelligentsia of the Caucasian group embrace. And that includes law number three, which says the men of any race will greatly prefer the women of a race which they regard higher than their own. Well, damn. Fuck. Your rough ass adaptation concerning Negro men greatly preferring white women. Why does this white prince greatly prefer this so-called black woman. Oh yeah, we would expect that of the lower echelons of the, of the social 
uh, strata. But when we're dealing with royalty here, they have a different upbringing. They know better. Okay then. So then, if he knows better, logic would dictate that he would do what he knows. Apparently, based on his teaching, he is doing better. <laughs> See, this is a prime example of how bullshit will always come back to bite you in the ass. The queen did not have to support it if it was not right and exact. She did not have to support it if it were not right and exact. Now, let me show you why they justify that. They're not going to talk about the four laws because that's a secret. You ain't supposed to know about that. You're not supposed to be deep enough to study that. But this is how they justify it. This woman right here. That is Megan's ancestor. That woman right there is Megan's ancestor. And that is how they justify it. That is how they justify. And guess what? That's totally fine. But what we cannot escape is the fact that that Caucasian sociologist pinned those laws and all of the world's intelligentsia subscribes to that shit. Okay, then. So your subscription is still in effect. Full E. Fucking fact. Yes. Yes. And this woman is Charlotte Sophia, Queen of England, consort to King George III and great great grandmother of George the Sixth. Mm hmm. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. So now, let's take this to a, another level here. Let's take this to another level. I mentioned a few minutes ago that uh, closer toward the beginning of tonight's broadcast, that J.A. Rogers was a student of Prophet Noble Drali, right? Okay, now, Prophet Drali died, he passed, made his transition, whatever you want to call it, in uh, 1928, okay? 1929, we had the stock market crash. Okay, now, um, Chevron, um, Brother Coleman, uh, Lorinda, Marticia, Troy, thank you so much for chiming in, guys. Great to see you. All right, now, J.A. Rogers was a student of Noble Drali. After Noble Drali left here, certain forces went into full swing to undermine the work of Noble Drali. <clears throat> 
Noble Drali told us before he left that it would be our own people, the Moors, who would force us back into slavery or would force us into slavery. Um, not, not transatlantic slavery, but if you don't know something, you are a slave to your ignorance, right? If you don't know your nationality, you are a slave to your ignorance. Whatever it is you are ignorant of, you are a slave to that. Okay, so now. Now I want to bring before the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, exhibit motherfucking B. This is Resolution 75. All right. Resolution 75. And uh, this was a resolution that was brought to the floor of the state of Pennsylvania, House of Representatives, in 1933. Mm -hmm. Listen to this bullshit right here. Mr. Whitkin, Mr. Speaker, I desire at this time to call up resolution. Well, let me start with the very beginning, at the top, the title. 1933 Legislative Journal House Page, 5,759, resolution number 75. Mr. Whitkin, Mr. Speaker, I desire at this time to call up resolution number 75. Printers number 1034. The resolution was read by the clerk as follows. In the House of Representatives, April 17, April 17th, 1933, many sons and daughters of that proud and handsome race which inspired the architecture of North Africa and carried First of all, let me let me pause. This is North Africa. North America is North Africa. Let me explain. Let me show you what I mean. I now present to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury exhibit motherfucking C. Wait. Bam, here we go. <clears throat> here we go. All right. <clears throat> okay. World map, right? World map. World map. World map. God damn, all these motherfucking uh, crazy ass, bullshit ass ads and shit. This a bitch. Okay, here we go. All right, world map. The fuck out of here. It's fucking ridiculous. Okay, you see Africa here? Remember our definition for Africa. Any lands of original people that has been conquered 
by white people or Caucasian people. All right? Okay. So. <clears throat> for all practical purposes, the whole damn land masses of the world are Africa. The Western Hemisphere consists of the land masses that are north of the Africa that is east of the Atlantic Ocean. So that makes the Western Hemisphere North Africa. Okay, now, all right. Now let's go back to this Resolution 75. Back to the resolution. Okay. Many sons and daughters of that proud and handsome race which inspired the architecture of Northern Africa. Now, what further evidence do we have that what I'm saying is right and exact? It's in the next statement. <clears throat> and carried into Spain the influence of its artistic temperaments have become citizens of this nation. Well, first of all, there wasn't no goddamn Spain in the year in question, which was 711 AD. So that's a false statement. That is a false statement. Okay. So any Spain that's being referred to prior to the founding of the Spain east of Atlantic has to be talking about a Spain that was over here. All right, now, we're cracking codes tonight. All right. Now, Noble Drew Lee did not teach Moors to become citizens of nothing. And especially no damn United States of America. No. Mm -mm. A sovereign people don't become no citizens to nothing. I don't have time to get into all of that shit. A lot of y'all already know what I'm talking about. So I'm not about to refry them goddamn beans tonight. Okay, now, listen. <clears throat> so, if some people that are being referred to here have become some citizens of some shit, <laughs> that's some bullshit. Let's continue. In the city of Philadelphia, which I just left, which I just left, Saturday night, there exists a Moorish American society made up of Moors who have found here the end of their quest for a home and of the children of those who journeyed here from the plains of Morocco. Mm, mm, mm. Now, who knows what a quest is? Who knows what the word quest means? Okay. All right. If you're not fast, you're going to get lost in the sauce. I ain't got time to play no games with y'all. Okay. So I now bring for your consideration, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, exhibit 
motherfucking D. Quest. Quest. Blow this shit up. I ain't got time to be playing. Living my best life. I ain't going back and forth with you niggas. Okay, here we go. Quest. A long or arduous search for something. Quest. A long or arduous search. For something. In medieval romance, an expedition made by a knight to accomplish a prescribed task. A knight is a warrior. A knight is actually the appropriate term would be a soldier because he works for somebody. A knight is a, merc a mercenary, a soldier for hire. A warrior fights not for money but out of loyalty to his or her nation okay now listen listen in medieval romance a quest was an expedition by a, a knight a hired mercenary a soldier a hitman Listen, to accomplish a prescribed task. So, for all practical purposes, a knight was an economic hitman. All right, now let's go back. Let's go back to Resolution 75 up in this piece. In the city of Philadelphia, there exists a Moorish American society made up of Moors, made up of Moors, who have found here the end of their quest, their assignment, their expedition as knights for a home and of the children of those who journeyed here from the plains. Plains is spelled P-L-A-I-N-S. But in reality, because of what we know, that plain should be spelled P-L-A-N-E-S as in planes of consciousness, planes of the knowledge of their nationality, that being Moroccan, al Morocco. See, Moors are those sovereigns from the land of al Morocco, which is the name of the lands of the Americas. All right now. And our culture defined and defines our plains of Moroccan consciousness. All right now, listen, listen, listen. So this resolution is talking about those 
who have fallen from their ancient al Moroccan planes of consciousness into a consciousness of citizenship to a democratic government that has their ancient empire under siege. And this resolution is giving kudos to those fallen Moors. Listen. This society, talking about the organization of Moors, who were behind the undermining of the work of Prophet Noble Drew Ali. This society has done much to bring about a thorough absorption by these people of those principles which are necessary to make them good American citizens. Ain't that a bitch? Ain't that a bitch? These Moorish Americans have since being here missed the use of the titles and name annexations that were so familiar at home and which I used in accordance with the doctrines of the religious faith to which they are adherents. Huh. Ain't that a motherfucking bitch. All you got left of your culture is the religious fixation to the trappings of your original greatness. You don't have a real connection, a vital connection. But all you got left is a belief in what used to be and a religious fixation to the stories that have been passed down from the usurpers of your culture, working in concert with those dirty moors who became hired soldiers, hired hands to the undermining of an entire culture, an entire nation of people. Ain't that too bad? It goes on. Therefore be it resolved that this house commands the Moorish American Society of Philadelphia for the efficient service it has rendered to the nation. To the nation. I thought this was the Philadelphia House of Representatives that this resolution was something that was relative and relevant within the context of the state of Philadelphia. These motherfuckers here are saying that these niggas did good service to the nation. Oh, shit. Let's read further, shall we? For the efficient service it has rendered the nation in bringing about a speedy and thorough Americanization of these former Moors. That's what it says, family. Former Moors. The resolution is, is giving kudos to former Moors. That's the that's official language. This is a, this is coming from a congressional record. 
This is coming from a congressional fucking record. And what is it telling you? Officially, it is telling you that after Prophet Noble Ali passed, all of the temples conspired with the government to put the Moors back into the state in which Prophet Noble Drew Ali found them. And that state was slavery. And this government institution is honoring the agents of chaos who conspired with the government of the United States to reverse the dignity that Noble Ali bestowed upon his Moorish nation. And that is why they utilize the term of former Moors where have you ever seen that term used? I'm showing it to you tonight. Somebody remind me at the end of the broadcast to put the link in the comment section of this broadcast of Resolution 75 so that you guys can print it and tuck it away, all right? I want you guys to get this resolution along with this broadcast. Review this broadcast until it gets into your spirit and start holding meetups in your city talking about Resolution 75. Call it Resolution 75 Meetup. If you're in North Carolina, if you're in Raleigh, if you're in St. Louis, if you're in Chicago, if you're in Motown, if you're in Miami, if you're in Los Angeles, if you're in San Francisco, I don't give a damn what city you in. Call it that city Resolution 75 Meetup and start bringing public awareness to this resolution and to the knowledge that I've shared in tonight's broadcast. We can reverse the curse, people. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Be it resolved that this house commends the Moorish American Society of Philadelphia for the efficient service it has rendered the nation, ain't that a bitch, in bringing about a speedy and thorough Americanization of these former Moors, and that in accordance with the fullest right of religious independence, Ain't that a bitch want to give a motherfucker religious independence? We want national independence. Fuck a religion. A niggas don't need another goddamn religion. You hear me? Don't need another goddamn religion. This is nation time. We demand national independence. Fuck a religious independence. And that in accordance with the fullest right of religious independence guaranteed every citizen, fuck a citizen. I said fuck a citizen. Ain't nobody trying to be no goddamn citizen. A citizen ain't shit. A ci that's right, I said it. A citizen ain't shit. And every time you claim to be a citizen, you catch shit. Because a citizen ain't shit. So since you are lacking, you get it. You lacking shit, they give you shit. All right. In bringing about a speedy 
and thorough Americanization of these former Moors, and that in accordance with the fullest right of religious independence guaranteed to every citizen, we recognize also the right of these people to use the name affixes El or Ali or Bey or any other prefix or suffix. An example of prefix would be illustrious. Would be illustrious. Would be illustrious. Go to Amazon.com and order The Scottish Rite Illustrated. Volume 1 and Volume 2. It'll give you all the secrets of the first uh, of the uh, of the 33 degrees of the Scott ancient and accepted ancient and accepted ancient and accepted Scottish rite of Freemasonry. And when I say secrets, I mean the rituals. The rituals are not the secrets, but the rituals will give you enough information so that you will see what the different titles are that they call different men on different degrees. All of these titles are Moorish. These are Moorish titles of nobility. One example would be illustrious. Illustrious, that would be a, a title prefix. A title prefix. El Bey would be a title suffix. The illustrious El Bey. That's a title prefix followed by a title suffix. Right? So in the Masonic order, the different degrees use different title prefixes. These are all Moorish. All Moorish. Order Knights Templar Illustrated. That'll give you all the rituals of the 13 degrees of the Yorkerite. From the first degree up to and including the Knights Templar. Get those books so that you can study and learn and understand, understand, understand and overstand your ancient title prefixes and suffixes so that you can begin to use these in referring to your brothers and sisters. This is how we are going to resurrect our nation, people. This shit ain't no religion. This shit is national. What time is it? Nation time. When is nation time? Right now. Where is nation time? Right here. That's what we're talking about. That's what I'm talking about. All right now. Use the name affixes, L, Ali, Bay, or any other prefix or suffix to which they have heretofore been accustomed to use, or which they may hereafter acquire the right to use. You have the right to use it now. You don't have to ask no Caucasians permission to use your ancient prefix and suffix titles uh, of nobility. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. On the question, will the House adopt the resolution? It was adopted May 4th, 1933. Right? May 4th, 1933. Okay. All right now. So I bring this up against the backdrop of making a statement that J.A. Rogers was a student of Noble Drali. I say that because those of you who are going to purchase this material, you need to understand that you have to take a forensic approach to your study of history so that you don't 
become overwhelmed by all the information and find yourself believing everything that's written just because of the um, reputation of the writer. He's all that in the bag of potato chips, so you believe every fucking word he says. No, 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 no. Hell to the no. No, we don't get down like that. We take what is of value. We take that which is relevant. And we discard anything that does not make sense. If it don't feel right, you don't fuck with it. If it don't sound right, you don't fuck with it. You see, I saw a number of things in J.A. Rogers' material that I had to disregard. But I don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I don't disregard everything. I hold on to that which is true. Because you got to work for truth, people. Truth don't just come and bite you on the ass, right? You have to work for this shit called truth. You must earn it. I remember a Temptation song back in the day. If you want my love, you got to earn it, earn it, earn it. Oh, yeah, you got to earn this shit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What I share with you guys tonight, I fucking earned it. I fucking earned it. Yeah. Yeah. I paid $800 round trip, $400 for the session, for the seminar, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's twelve hundred motherfucking dollars. I paid twelve hundred dollars to share a piece of my broadcast tonight. This piece about resolution seventy five. I had to pay twelve hundred dollars for that shit. I just gave it to you for free. Why did I do that? Because I love you. Y'all, my peeps. I love y'all, man. I spend money so I can bring that shit back to y'all. But God damn it, I'm not giving it to you, to you for nothing. I want you to put some work in. I want you to take this message to your city. Set up meetups. Set up meetups in your city. Drop this knowledge on that ass, man. Start a fire in that bitch. Yes. Start a fire in that bitch. Okay? All right, now, having said that, okay, we done with that. I covered all that. I covered that. I covered that. Bam, 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 bam. Covered all that shit. Bam. I covered that. Now, let's talk about spiritual foundations for success in delivering the message. Okay, now we're going to talk about some pyramids up in this bitch. I picked this up also. Pyramids in America. All right? So what we're going to do is we're going to lay the foundations for our success. How are we going to do that? We're going to take a, a pilgrimage to our ancient power sources, our power spots in America. All right. And if you're not in America, we will um, give you power spots to other parts of the world that you may be near so that you can do a pilgrimage there. Fuck taking pilgrimages to Mecca. No disrespect to my Muslim brothers and sisters, but listen. The ancestors showed y'all what they thought of Mecca when 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 all them goddamn locusts converged on Mecca. That shit was nasty as fuck. Google that shit. Locusts converge on Mecca. Shut that motherfucker down. Motherfuckers couldn't pray. Motherfuckers couldn't do shit. They had the goddamn motherfucking what? Arabian army and shit? Trying to clean that shit the fuck up? 
I don't know if they got that shit handled yet or not. Maybe, maybe not. But the point is, any spiritual person knows that that is a sign of an area being cursed. If that was the real Mecca, ain't no fucking way them locusts would have converged like that. No fucking way. Right? So when I talk about a pilgrimage, that's not where I'm talking about. That's an artificial location created by the colonial powers. Okay? So the ancestors let you know what kind of spirit was up in there. None. Zip. Right? Okay? I'm going to give you the real deal, Holyfield. I'm going to give you the authentic power places. In, in North America and other parts of the world. So what I want you guys to do right now is chime in and tell me what city you're in. And I'm going to tell you where the power places are in your city, where the pyramids are in your city, where the mounds are in your city. Okay? All right. Okay. So, uh, okay, so, I'm in Illinois, and we got a lot of stuff going on in Illinois. We got a lot of mounds in Illinois. Okay, Chicago. Okay, totally, totally awesome. Um, okay, Chicago. You know, out there on, uh, I think it's uh, that the on, on the Bishop Ford Expressway, Okay, Cleon, the Bishop Ford Expressway going south, Bishop Ford Expressway going south, you know where that, 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 that location is where they have the pipes coming out of those mounds, shooting up fire at night, you know, it's supposed to be where they, they, uh, they harness natural gas, okay, those are mounds. Those are mounds, oh, Cleon. Those are mounds, okay? Now, I've, I don't know if it's open to the public, but those are fucking mounds. Also, south near St. Louis, we have Cahokia Mounds, right? We got Cahokia Mounds, okay? Um, we got Dixon Mounds in Illinois. Albany Mounds in Illinois. Okay, somebody just told me Florida. Okay, Florida, you got Lake Jackson Mounds in Florida. You got the Great Temple Mound at the Crystal River State Archaeological Site. You have Indian Temple Mound in Florida. You have Jupiter Inlet Indian Mound. You have Madeira Bickle Mounds Horse Island Shell Mounds, and you have Cinders Mound at Seminole Rest, right? Okay, um, exactly. You're right, Cleon. It stinks like fuck over there. Okay, okay. Uh, Lizzie Nat, I just broke down Florida, so review the tape, and uh, you'll get your information from from there okay all righty okay anybody else anybody else okay all right so now <clears throat> this is what i want you to do you're going to i'm i'm about to i'm about to go into it right now okay you're going to pour libation on the mounds and call upon the ancestors. You're going to call upon your ancestors and your family, and you're going to call on our ancestors as a nation of people, right? You're going to get a bottle of gin and a bottle of rum, a liter of gin, a liter of rum, right? The gin represents the light, the rum represents the dark. And you're going to get another, and, and what you're going to do is you're going to pour half of the gin into another container, and then you're going to pour 
half of the rum into the bottle of the gin. And so that way you're going to have a liter of mixed light and dark. Okay. Right? And so when you pour libation, you're going to call on the name of the ancestor in question <clears throat> three times as you pour. So for example, if we say Harry Tubman, we're going to say Harry we're gonna we're gonna pour once and say Harry Tubman. Pour twice and say Harry Tubman. Pour three times and say Harry Tubman. Right? And then whatever the other ancestor is, you're gonna pour once, say the name, pour twice, say the name, pour thrice, say the name. Once you finish with the ancestors that you're going to pour libation to at that time, right? And of course, at the end of the third pour, you say Ashe. Harry Tubman, Harry Tubman, Harry Tubman, Ashe. Uh, Benjamin Banneker, Benjamin Banneker, Benjamin Banneker, Ashe. Like that. However many ancestors you call on, that's how you do it. And once you've completed, then tell them what you want them to do. And remember, the women are used for protection and healing. The men ancestors are used for prosperity, bringing finances, opening doors for business. Remember those secrets and your pilgrimage will be successful because those are very potent lands where those mounds are located. Right? Our dead are buried there. They built mounds to bury the dead. The, 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 the remains of the ancient ones are in those mounds. Okay? All right. So, that's it in a nutshell. Okay, so, okay. We said North Carolina. We said uh, Texas. Okay, let's see what's going on in uh, North Carolina. All righty, that's North Dakota. Let's see, do we have a North Carolina? Oh, yeah, we definitely got a North Carolina. Yeah, we got a North Carolina. Yeah, we got a North Carolina. Okay, in North Carolina, you have... You have Town Creek Indian Mound. Town Creek Indian Mound. You have Cowee, C-O-W-E-E -E Mound, and Village site. You also have the bomb site, Biltmore Mounds, Canton Mound, Garden Creek Platform Mounds, Nikwasi Mounds, Nuniel, Nu, Ni, uh, Nu, Onyi Mound and Village Site, Peachtree Mound, Spikebuck Town Mound and Village Site. Okay? Um, that was for North Carolina. Uh, in Texas, let's see what we got for Texas. Yeah, I saw Texas in here earlier. I saw Texas in here earlier. Yes, I did. Okay, Texas, we got Caddo Mounds. We got Medicine Mounds. We got McFadden Indian Mound. We got Haley Mound site, Tilson Mounds, Westerman Mound, Kilmantia Mound, Archaeological District, and Flower Mound, all in Texas. Okay? All right. Anybody else before we sign off? Anybody else before we sign off tonight? Okay? Alrighty then. So remember to review this broadcast. Remember to remind me to put the link for resolution 75 in the comment section of this broadcast so that you can print this out and study it. Remember to hold meetups Resolution 75 meetup. So if you're in San Antonio, Angela, you're going to open up, you're going to go to meetup.com and you're going to set up a, uh, a meetup for San Antonio, Texas. You're going to call it the San Antonio 
Resolution 75 Meetup. And you're going to teach what I've shared on this broadcast in connection with Resolution 75. Right? You're going to have meetups. You're going to have meetups. Absolutely. 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 And stay in touch with me. Everybody, I want you to stay in touch with me with respect to these meetups so that we can organize and move this process forward. Okay? Okay. So, um, you're going to be in Nevada. Okay, so let me give you some, let me give you some uh, mounds for Nevada. M N. Nevada. M N. Uh oh, wait a minute now. Oh. Gotta be some stuff going on in Nevada, man. Let me see. Let me see. Wow. I'm not showing any miles in Nevada, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, then. So, um, yeah, people, stay in communication with me on these meetups because what I'll do is I will I will uh, share with everybody who's setting up these meetups additional information on how to um, position yourself and. Um, uh, get everybody on point with respect to this knowledge. I will share some more information with you so that your meetups will be powerful and, uh, and they will grow um, <clears throat> as far as uh, your numbers and everything. And uh, you're gonna get some stuff done. You're gonna get major things done because the first thing that you needed to know was that your friend was your enemy. I had to let you know who was behind your captivity. Who was behind your captivity. And you're going to have to become a free agent. You're going to have to become independent. Right? But you need someone who gives a damn. You need someone who gives a damn enough to support your your, your endeavor in taking this message forward. So you're being commissioned as apostles to take this message forward and to, and to, and to, and to strike new ground, new ground, new ground, lay foundations, Lay foundation. This is for leaders only. If you're a follower, get the fuck out of here. If you want to run some shit, stay tuned. Stay tuned. I will teach you how to run some shit. That's right. If you want to do this work, if you are willing to do this work, I will back you. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. What I've shared to you tonight, you will never get in a local temple because they have all, and when I say all, I mean all, they have all co-conspired with the government. They are all 501c3 organizations. Every last one of them. It's a goddamn shame, but that's just the the real deal and the cold-blooded fact, Jack. It is what it is. And it ain't what it ain't. Everybody that look like us ain't for us. That's it. That's all. You know? So, Cleon, you my homie. You my homeboy right here in Chicago. Chicago. So we should have been talking. I'm shocked shitless that this is my first time seeing you chime in on any of my shit, but that's totally fine. You chimed in at the right time. 
You know what I'm saying? So let's do this work, y'all. Let's do this work. Let's do this work. Let's do this work. You know? All right? So uh, for those who did not <clears throat> uh, chime in and for those who will, you know, view this broadcast later, get this book, Pyramids in America, A Traveler's Guide, Pyramids in America. It breaks down every state where there are ancient pyramids and mounds. Right? I hear you. I hear you, Cleon. I hear you, Cleon. I hear you, Cleon. Okay? So it breaks down the mounds and pyramids in, in uh, every state that has them. All states don't have them. Right? But those that do, they, they let you know where they are. But the good thing is, if you're here in America, you know, there's so many states that do have mounds that you don't have to travel far for your pilgrimage. Hello. Yeah. Get in your car and go, baby. Get your gin and your rum, mix them bitches to cover your light and your dark and just start ripping shit up. You're doing this for your meetups. You're going to do the Resolution 75 meetup for your city. And I will back you. I will back you. When you get a certain number in attendance, I will come and uh, and do a seminar at your meetup and give you further information and insight into how to move this process and this divine and national movement forward. Noble Drali prophesied, he said that the Moors that came later would do the work and that the old Moors would fall by the wayside. So the baton has been passed to us by the prophet to get the work done, people. The old Moors are not going to do the work. If they were going to do the work, they would have already done the fucking work. How the fuck are you going to have all these Moorish temples all over America and our people still fucked up? Ordinarily, I would say I don't get it, but but after studying Resolution 75 over the weekend, I get it. I get it. I fucking get it. Do you get it? Right? Now, if you get it, then join me in this great work. This is the great work. Don't get it twisted. God damn it. This shit here, nigga, is... The great work. It don't get no greater than this. Don't get no greater than this. The shit I dropped on y'all tonight, you ain't never heard in no temple. Never. Never will. Because their agenda is some other shit. Why in the fuck do they all teach civics in them temples? You know what civics is? That's how to remain a slave as a citizen. That's the science of of, of fucking servitude as a fucking citizen. That's what civics is. They should be they should be teaching political science, not civics. They should be teaching diplomacy, not civics. You teach civics to a slave how to be civil. Come on man, think. Damn it man. What the fuck? You know your enemy when they start talking about civics class. I, I ain't got time to be bullshitting. <clears throat> I ain't got time to be bullshitting, and I am not going to hold no punches. I don't give a fuck. Y'all not doing right by my people. Fuck y'all. I'm living my best life. Ain't going back and forth with you niggas. No. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? So, if I'm going to make enemies, let me make them now. So I can save my people. Because just as fast as I make enemies, I'm making friends. 
the friends are who I build with. The enemies is who, is, is who gonna get fucked up if they if they try some shit. Period. Period, man. I ain't got time to play. Too old for that shit, bro. I ain't got time for no play games. For no for no for no for no play time and playing no 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 goddamn games. I ain't got time for that shit. Mm -mm. Play time is over, baby. Play time is over. You know. So. And if you're from Chicago, you know how we roll. You know how we roll. We don't play no. We don't play no games in shot in the shot now. We don't play no games. A nigga from Chicago will give you the shirt off his back, but do not take his kindness for weakness. You will be found missing. Period. No. Not for play play. <laughs> I know that's right. I'm telling you, man. That's real shit, bro. I was born in Fifth City. West Side. All that good shit. Know what I'm saying? Give you the shirt off my motherfucking back. Very hospitable. Very. Very fucking hospitable. In that order. Yeah. I know that's right, El Negro. I know that's right. I know that's right. We just are loving people, man. But do not cross us, motherfucker. You will be found MIA. Period. Ain't got time for no bullshit. Okay? So with that family, listen. It's been a ball, y'all. Like I say, go ahead, review this message. Get this book, Pyramids in America. Okay, Southside, I feel you, baby. Somebody remind me to put that link in the comment section of this broadcast for that Resolution 75 so y'all can print that bitch and have that in your, in your folder. Remember to set up your meetups for your city, your Resolution 75 meetups, so that you can begin to discuss the knowledge presented on this broadcast along with the knowledge behind Resolution 75 so that you can let our people know who the enemy really is. It's all these motherfucking temples out here teaching civics and shit. If you, if you call a local temple and ask them, y'all teach civics? When y'all teach civics? Oh, we teach civics on Wednesday night, so and so. Just hang the phone up. Because you already know they're the enemy. Ask them, y'all got a 511c3? Are y'all 511c3? Yes, sir. Oh, absolutely. Yes, we Hang them up on the phone up. Period. Resolution 75 gives you the game. Let you know who the agents are, and that they have done a, a service to the nation, not our nation, to the democracy, to the democratic nation. The Moorish nation is a republic. The democracy is the Caucasian takeover of the Moorish republic. And guess what that republic is called and this is in congressional records this is some more knowledge i'm gonna drop on y'all for y'all's uh resolution 75 meetups the name of the government that the caucasians took over is called and this is in the congressional record the moorish empire of the united states of america I wasn't going to drop that on y'all tonight. I told myself I wasn't, but the ancestors told me to just go ahead and leave y'all with that. That's the original name of 
the Americas, North and South America, including Greenland. Now, Greenland is a part of the Western Hemisphere, the Americas. The Caribbean, all of that is called the, the original name for it. And it still exists. It's just under siege by a foreign corporation. Our government here is called the Moorish Empire of the United States of America. I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what I know. I paid $1,200 for that knowledge, and I just gave it to you for free. Absolutely. Okay. So that's the name of your government here from sea to shining fucking sea, the Moorish empire of the United States of America. They didn't invent shit. All they did was came and took over what was already created constitution, form of government, everything. All they did was change the names from the Moorish names of the different offices and departments to their name. And I have the information on all of that. You help me get this message out and I will supply you with the material because together we're going to save this nation. I can't do this by myself. Yes, that's it, Chrissy. The Moorish Empire of the United States of America. All of that is ours. All of that is the name of our government that is currently under siege by the U.S., the U.S. Corporation. Yep. Mm -hmm. And Chrissy, I would, I would counsel you not to use that information until... I show you how to work that. I just dropped that on you for your information, okay? All right, baby. Work with me and I'll work with you. Okay, mama. Right? Okay, so so that's how that go, family. That's that's how that go, right? Okay, so let's do this. Um, I'm going to sign off, and uh, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to, I'm going to copy right now this uh, link for the uh, Resolution 75. And as soon as I sign off, I'm going to, uh, oh, yes, we will rise. Yes, sir, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And, uh, as soon as I sign off, I'm going to uh, paste this link to the comment section of this uh, broadcast tonight. And so you'll just be able to click on that and uh, download that, print that out. You know, print it out in color so it looks real cool in your, uh, you know, portfolio and everything. Right? Okay, family, listen. Like I said, uh, it's been a ball, y'all. And uh, I'm going I'm to bring it on back to y'all later. And uh, stay in touch with me. Let me know how things are progressing um, with you with respect to your meetups in your city, your Resolution 75 meetups, okay? Uh, We're going we gonna to fuck some shit up, family. Absolutely. You got my word on that. I mean this shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't play no games. I spend money for knowledge and I bring it back to my people because that's what I was born to do, right? And those are my people who will work with me and do this work. I got you. We're going to come up together, goddammit. We're going to sit down and we're going to eat together, goddammit. Yeah, for real, for real. Okay, family, listen, I'm going to sign off for, for, for right now and... Uh, We'll talk again real soon, real soon. All right, peace and love.